Hi, and welcome to Collect Awakening, and I'm your host, Linda Summers, and these shows are all about self-awareness and truth about the matrix. What is the matrix? How is it breaking down, and how has it affected us mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and financially? And today's topic is going to be exactly that. We're going to talk about the matrix. What is it? How is it breaking down? And how has it affected us in these areas? With Mike at Decoding the Storm. And with that, I'd love to welcome Mike to the show. Hey, Mike. Hey, Linda, how are you? Thanks, I'm doing thanks great. for having, thank uh, you for you're having welcome. me on. You're welcome. I'm glad you were able to um, come on the show and be interviewed. I heard you um, on Justin's when he did the Tomorrowland, and I was very impressed and really loved um, the conversation. So I was like, I got to have this guy on the show for sure. So, yeah. So thank you for being here. You're welcome. And uh, yeah, thank you. Those shows are a lot of fun. Uh, it's a real uh, privilege to be on there with uh, somebody like Justin. Um, you know, he's a brother from another mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've learned so much from him over the past um, year and a half that I've, I've gotten to spend with him. Um, you know, I believe in, uh, you know, sur surrounding yourself with good people. And uh, and as far as it goes, uh, it doesn't really get much better than him. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's always a blessing with him. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, I want to begin, Mike, just with kind of so the audience has an idea of how you came to this place of knowingness, because we know that the world has been, you know, people have been programmed and suppressed and they don't know what's outside of what they just know. Right. What they've been taught, learned and things like that. And so so they have an idea of how you arrived to this place of your knowingness about um, what's going on in the world, about the matrix and. Um, if that's your language, uh, just so they have an idea what's going on, like how you arrived to this place. Yeah. Um, so it, it started, um, you know, I guess it is a, is a child. Um, I always wanted to know how things worked. You know, I would be the kid taking apart the stereo and, uh, trying to put it back together, you know, anything electrical that had screws, nuts or bolts, you know, I'd, um, would always have it apart. Um, so just throughout the years, you know, I, I observe and I pay attention and, um, you know, the, the more you grow and the more you observe the, uh, the more you realize that the people around you aren't observing the, the way that you are, you know? And, uh, so, you know, that's, that's a, a key, a key element of the matrix, um, is is you have some people that are waking here, some people that are com completely asleep to uh, the reality of of the world that we live in, or at least the perceived reality of the world that we live in. Um, so you know, it was your typical troubled youth in school, and um, you know, got diagnosed as ADHD, ADHD, and you know, went on the whole regimen of Adderall and Ritalin and. Mm -hmm. You know, so was taught at a young age that if there's something wrong with you, throw drugs at it, um, you know, um, but, um, you know, it, I have an investigative mind and uh, it's, it, it's, it's just always all over the place and I could never keep it truly contained in the work at school. So uh, mm -hmm. I had a rough time with that. Um, so, you know, going through all of that, and having such a miserable time with with school uh it was a glimpse into you know like something's wrong you know that 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 experience shouldn't shouldn't have been that bad um to be thrown into uh 12 years of uh you know the the Rockefeller institutions that aren't truly designed with your best interest at heart um more so to create you know, uh, mindless workers and, you know, people that don't understand contracts and, and what they mean and don't teach us about these important concepts, trust law. And, um, you know, so and I know I'm, I'm, I'm already getting all over the place, but, um, <clears throat> you know, cause I, I, I have picked up so much over the, over the years through going down uh, just the, every rabbit hole I could find. Right. And and um, through all that, um, you, you gain a lot of d discernment and, uh, 
you know, practice, uh, <laughs> you know, with, uh, with, with, uh, you know, the psychological warfare that we've been under, Yeah. you know, yeah. it's, um, you know, in, in hindsight, knowing what I know now, um, well, I guess, I, I guess I should try to stay on the topic. I'm sorry. Um, you know, what, what got me here. So I will, yeah, I will go ahead. Oh, I was going to say that pivotal moment where you were just like, there was this shift in your own consciousness because that's going to play a role. in when we talk about the matrix, because I think that's where a lot of people um, is our, my desire for the show is to have that pivotal moment where they just shift and there becomes this aha moment like you, you know what I mean? So yeah, if you can kind of tell us like, when was that, you know, what occurred? that really had you shift because it sound like you had some stuff going on. You had investigative mind, which I love and just observing. And that's so important. And we'll talk about that in the show too, because uh, I wrote that down because to be the observer and observe is so important, you know? So, yeah. So was there a moment, a pivotal moment that happened for you that brought you to this place that you know now that, cause you're speaking on a lot of shows, you know? So um, that appears to me. And so, um, you know, you're on telegram and stuff like that. So, um, there is this desire to have pe for people to want your knowledge, you know what I mean? And to receive that. Absolutely. And, um, you know, so I would say that the, the, the pivotal moment was, was nine 11. Um, I was a, a sophomore in high school when that happened. It was the first year we ever had TVs on the walls. Mm -hmm. And so the first plane had already hit. Um, and then on the TV, you know, we got to watch the second plane hit live. Um, so, you know, I got to witness, you know, everything that transpired from that, the, the Patriot Act, the war. Um, you know, a lot changed after after that day. Yeah. And then. I came across the documentary called uh, Loose, Loose Change 9-11, mm -hmm. and Justin Carpenter referenced that as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was so much in that documentary that proved that there was more to the story that, you know, you, 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 you could, it was, it was that red pill moment. You know, once you see it, you can't, you can't unsee it. Right. Um, you had to know more uh, because you had that certain element of, of why did why did they do this and uh you know what are they going to do next mm -hmm. um so from there you know you you develop that distrust of the government and um everything that they're saying and you just try to learn as much as you can you know right. coming from a, a place of fear mm -hmm. you know um you know it was definitely uh go ahead no, I was going to say what I love is that, and, and I think that has to happen more now, is that it's the questioning, right? It's not just going, okay, this happened and um, it's out there. Yeah, it was a devastating. No, there's so much more that, like you said, we don't know. It's the, what the media was telling us was not what really, you know, was going on. So the people didn't question. And I love that um, it was such a, for you and you know Justin also too was 9/11 was that pivotal moment right that there was like wow that there's something more to this and then when you come across that movie it's like then you start to dive a little bit deeper and I think that's where people need to start really is questioning and asking why you know what I mean and and looking further into things as opposed to just going okay well this is the information they're giving me and I'm trusting that Absolutely. And, you know, it opened up a whole can of worms because, you know, something that was so obvious after watching that and then trying to inform others about it. You know, I, I just remember being called so many names, unpatriotic and, you know, how dare you question the narrative? You know, we're over in I Iraq and it's, you know, we were attacked and we've got to do this. And, um, you know, it's almost like you become a pariah for trying to just get people to look at the obvious facts that that were there that were enough to 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 raise major suspicion and then fr from there you start to dive into other events like the Oklahoma City bombing 
Um, and you notice the similarities there. Mm -hmm. um, we see, you know, the, you know, I, I went through a phase where I just, I, I wanted to watch every documentary that I could and absorb all of these, these different perspectives. And, you know, you come across things, you know, documentaries about uh, Ruby Ridge, um, Waco, Texas, and you start to see that, you know, this picture that everybody paints of this country and this land of the free that we live in is not really free in that, you know, the government can step in and burn a church full of people um, who had religious freedoms and, you know, rights to those firearms and, um, you know, the whole the whole thing with Ruby Ridge and that horrible event you know it's you can't unsee those moments and uh you know you can't help but to feel if you if you're next so it just became more you know uh, more and more like almost like an addiction to to learning and and growing and trying to understand what's taking place in the world you know outside you know using the tool of the internet um to, to be able to gain a higher perspective of, of what's going on out there. And um, so that thirst for, for knowledge has taken me uh, so many different places. So it was, yeah, it was just a, a, almost a, at that, at that point after learning what I learned and realized that nobody else was paying attention, yeah. it, it almost became like a, you know, I felt the, the the weight of the world was shifted onto my shoulders because I'm like, there, there's major things going on. You know, um, Alex Jones, Alex Jones made a lot of documentaries like blueprint for, uh, global tyranny and game. Um, you know, that, and these made a lot of sense and were very, very scary, um, documentaries when you, when you see it and then you can, can, could contrast what was taking place alongside what he was saying mm -hmm. and as crazy as alex jones is in that whole act you know he was revealing truth to people and, and has woken a lot of people up at least to you know snapped them out of that stupor yeah. you know if you will so um mm -hmm. i had i had watched a lot of his stuff um not not a not a terrible ter terribly low terribly large amount uh and definitely not in a long time but uh because i could recognize that he was a part of the psyop as well mm -hmm. you know i could see the psyops that were taking place um you know my before having decoding the storm uh i had the uh, the, the channel still up on youtube called the truth ignored and the two main videos i did on there 10 years ago uh, were, were called Wag the Dog, and it was after watching a 1997 movie with uh, Robert De Niro, Anne Heche, uh, Dustin Hoffman, um, Woody Harrelson, a couple other people, and that movie was a complete window into what was taking place where the people that are presenting the news are using Hollywood producers and directors and studio technology to manipulate the minds of of the people and um i don't know if you've seen that movie or not no. um mm -mm. but you know it's a it's a must watch to truly yeah. grasp where where we are now mm -hmm. and um you know so i so when i seen that movie i had also seen a video where they where they did the same thing you know where cnn was using a blue screen in a studio to pretend that they were in the Gulf War in uh, the early 90s. So I, I just, all I did was edit the two videos together to show people. And I mean, over 10 years, it's been like 37,000 people have seen it. You know, that's not a lot over the those years, but to me, it's, you know, those people, you know, they have to come out of this, with a different perspective to yeah. see, you know, what lengths that they're able to go to go to. And then you understand that wag the dog was made by the good guys, mm -hmm. you know, and that they were showing us that 
they they were showing us what was taking place um so um i took a break from you know after doing those uh you know i i did meet uh meet my ex-wife and uh ended up having four kids mm -hmm. and you know really tried to stay away from all this for a while and try to live a normal life um it was very damaging to stay in those rabbit holes um yeah. the, the way that i was doing doing and uh so uh you know I, I removed myself from it and uh realized the world wasn't gonna fall apart without me so uh you know then um i would say when trump when Trump went into office, I voted for Trump the first time in 2016 um, because I believe that if Hillary won, that she was going to put that no-fly zone over Ukraine and kick off a proxy war with Russia. Yeah. So even though I didn't trust Trump at all, didn't really look into any of his policies, you know, I voted on that single issue of, um, you know, who who I thought would keep us out of war, yeah. and. Uh, so um and I'm yeah I'm kind of kind of getting all over the place now but uh That's but, good. but, That's good but but uh uh so I I started paying attention to what was going on mm -hmm. in the politics when Trump got in mm -hmm. and I seen how much the media was attacking him and call uh, and and he responded by calling them fake news mm -hmm. So, you know, having me made those videos in 2012 and it, trying to expose myself that the news was fake, sure. you know, it, it, Trump won my heart right then. I was like, okay, he's calling him out. Like, this is something else. Yeah. This isn't business as usual. Yeah. So I spent that whole Trump term watching the politics, watching as much of the uh, stuff in the, in, in Congress and, and just, absorbing as much as I could to see if real change was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when the election came around in uh, 2020 and uh, we witnessed that whole, you know, the stolen election and COVID and mm -hmm. um, all of that happened at the same time, it, it pulled me back into the world of conspiracy, uh, you know, much, much more than I'd ever been right. because it, it, you know, there was a lot of validation that I was looking looking for for you know people ignoring me telling them about things like the Georgia Guidestones oh, yeah. uh, you know for so many years and them ignoring me like look there's a plan there's mm -hmm. people plotting and planning evil stuff and they're doing they're telling us right in front of our faces yeah. and you know again those people being blue pilled and just uh stuck in themselves I guess yeah you know let's it's uh, Let's dive in that direction because I think that's um, really important. And what I loved what you were saying about because um, you went down the rabbit hole like really far. And I, I do feel that there's so much. And because I found out about this stuff back in 1990, not to the extreme with the adrenochrome and the child sacrifice and all that kind of stuff. But I knew about the secret societies, the skull and bones and all of that. And I was just like no way the government are you kidding and then it's like then you start to like you said you start to observe you start to pay attention and you start to like you kind of feel like i always felt like it's like the hunger games you know what i mean and well the hunger games came out long after that but you know something that there's this control but you didn't really kind of know so that's where i was kind of alluding to is that don't you think that um people don't i think what, what I see is people and it's just talking to people is that they don't think that the government would ever do this. Like, why would the government ever do that? Like they're there, you know, they're the government, right? And they're supposed, it's like your mom and dad, they're God to you when you're a child. It's like anything they say, you're like, okay, because you trust them. And I think that's what happened is that we just fully put all the trust and allowed them to really run the show, everything, including us without knowing any of the backstory of why all this was going on, which kind of goes into uh, about the matrix. So I think that's, you know, and like you said, when you got back involved with Trump and seeing what Trump was doing 
And he was just like, whoa, wait a minute, you know. Of course, we know that he knew a lot more before he got into office. But um, so I want to ask you, do you want to decoding the storm? Because I really kind of want to know what I mean. I have a sense of what that means. But it feels like decoding the storm would come after the conversation about the matrix. Yes. Well, I mean, it they go hand in hand because okay. it is it is connected. OK, um, so let's you know, dive it, into that mixture of decoding the storm and the matrix, because I really want people to grasp the idea. Now, you guys, if you haven't seen the movie, The Matrix, you may want to see it. There's three movies because especially if you haven't seen it and you watch these interview, this interview and the one with Justin Carpenter as well, because it'll give you an idea of what we're talking about. And then you can kind of see, as Mike had said earlier about becoming the observer, because you really want to be stepping back and really becoming the observer. So um, yeah, so the matrix is really important because I think, well, I, I've seen all three movies and yeah, it's just, it's like, of course, you know, so that's where the red pill, the blue pill comes in that we're talking about, that a lot of people are talking about. And I did want to mention something when you talked about conspiracy theories that you got back into being conspiracy theories. The CIA was the one that turned that, that coined that um, uh, uh, term. Did you know that? Conspiracy theory? Yeah, ab yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah how they, interesting uh, is that? They made it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was really kind of interesting. Yeah, made it, made it a dirt. Yeah, made it a dirty word, and uh, you know, it's a lot of the stuff we're dealing in now is conspiracy fact. In, yeah. And uh, you know, um, in, uh, I'll let you go back. Go ahead. Uh, uh, what question did you want me to answer? Uh, yeah. So I was saying, you know, so, so you said decoding the storm and the matrix are really um, intertwined together, so they kind of go hand in hand. So. Let's be, let's talk about the matrix, you know, and what is the matrix? We know the matrix is breaking down and you and I know, and the people that are awake and know how it has affected us mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and financially. I think some, the, most of the people, um, I shouldn't say most, but people that are, may watch the show afterwards, they may not even know, you know, like they may be working the two jobs like myself, right. And doing all this stuff. And, they don't really understand how we've been controlled and programmed and conditioned. And like you said, the, um, the media has been, uh, it's all about MK ultra mind control and all of that. So that's where I kind of kind of, so just to kind of educate them on what is all that and how's that been, how's it breaking down and how's it affected us, which they can probably see that, but I think it'd be good to hear. And then decoding the storm. How that's in relationship to this as well okay yeah um so yeah very big topic um uh, and the, the matrix movies are um excellent um uh, i think that when people truly understand understand what or yeah in, understand what they are um and, and who they were made by um they'll they'll go down in history as a is a major part of the psychological warfare that mm -hmm. that has taken place um, because that that movie was made, um, you know, as I've I've heard it referenced as a documentary, um, not in a way that we're in a computer program or you know hooked up in in pods, but uh, you know that that you know in that movie, uh, I guess talking about it in a way, um, without giving spoilers, you know, basically all humanity is hooked up to these. Uh, robotic machines and being harvested for their energy to keep the, the the machines alive and while they're in these pods um they're having a simulated world um played through their head so they they don't even have any clue that they're that they're jacked into this matrix and that their energy is is being harvested it's a whole real world experience that they're living and in the movie, you know, you're presented a choice, and I feel like this this part has to be talked about. Uh, yeah. You know, just just for conversation's sake, that you know the main character Neo is given a choice to take a red pill and go further down the rabbit hole and learn the truth, um, which you know he can you can never undo. You know, once you take it, you, uh, you what what is seen can't be unseen, or you take the blue pill 
and you forget everything ever happened. You go back to your life the way it was, and um, that's that's that. And <clears throat> that that is an allegory for the hunt for the truth and um, understanding the the that there the world around us is an illusion. You know, almost in a um, John Carpenter's "They Live" sense. Uh, that's another great movie um, that was was made by the same people trying to share the same message. You know, uh, uh, people have a <clears throat> you know th that movie is you know basically there's special glasses that people sunglasses that people can put on and they see the world for what it is. Uh, around them you know same same these same these same principles and concepts are being carried through through throughout ho these hollywood movies and and books throughout the the past centuries you know like alice in wonderland mm -hmm. you know if you ask me that's that's the original matrix you know so to me the matrix is just a spin off of of alice in wonderland so you know and even you have those matching elements of uh, the white rabbit and Alice following the white rabbit down the rabbit hole, you know, yeah. in the matrix, that main character, Neo, who takes the red pill, he, you know, to get to that point, he had to see, seen a white rabbit and he followed that white rabbit, you know, he's seen a sign in his reality and he, and he followed it. So, um, you know, so, so much can be said about this movie, but, you know, we all can sense that there's, you know, at least if you're paying attention at this point, you know, we, we, we all can sense that illusion. And, you know, you, again, you could either take that red pill and, and dive down this and go as deep down as, as you can possibly go. And there's no being one foot in, one foot in and one foot out with this because the information that you will come across is going to change your life and you know that has major effects on 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 your own li lives uh, it's you know just dest destroyed my marriage um, my family's going through a lot right now um, you get isolated from from friends and, and family um, you get looked at like a like a nut job you know or like you're in some kind of cult you know, be just just based upon observing, um, you know the the truth outside of outside of the matrix. And I, I guess I'll just stop there and let you jump in. Yeah, because when you were talking, it's like I wanted. I kept hearing um, for people that are listening. It's what really brought up for me when I watched that movie was the fact that he was in such a routine. He hated his life. He hated his job. There was nothing that he really liked about anything and it was so routine and my question would be to anybody that's listening is how is that in your own life look at this as your life you know the people that can't be with their children and the mothers that can't be with their children raising their kids as they're go growing up and they have to work two jobs and these kids are on the street or getting in trouble and, you know they're in gangs or whatever they're doing right um who knows and so <clears throat> for him it was as if that when he got this opportunity and I feel that is like now where we all have this opportunity. We've had this opportunity um, since Trump came into office. Um, we've had really before then, if people were, you know, paying attention to different things like you and Justin and everybody, you know, a lot of the people that have known about this stuff for a long time. But we have the opportunity to kind of really see and see how our life is. And like, is this supposed to really be this way and start to question? And so that's what I would say is people that are watching, it's like, look at this movie and, you know, do you want, you know, he, he's offered that red pill, like you said, and the blue pill and the red pill is to go down, the, to know the truth, to go down that rabbit hole. And the blue pill is to remain in your own life and just kind of stick your head in the sand and go, I don't want to know. Cause I think there's a lot of people that are, that it's, it's hard, I think, for people to really know the truth because they don't want to think that the government or, you know, even relationships, you can, uh, you know, tie it into relationships, uh, your marriage or um, anything you can tie it into your children. You know, you don't really want to know that your son or your daughter is on drugs. You know what I mean? So there's so many ways to tie it in that not just in worldly 
And so, but it is all, you know, we're this whole collective. So, um, you know, and then you can taking that and looking at all this information and hearing and starting to question and go down that rabbit hole. Wouldn't you want that as versus taking the blue pill and having your life be the same and being miserable? I mean, that would be my question for anybody that's listening is that why would you want that? So he decided, you know, to take that and run with it. And, and see the truth, right? And I feel then that really kind of t- brings us into our purpose in life. You know, he had a purpose, you know, so he followed that, but he didn't know that until he got in it. And so, but had he not and taken the blue pill, you know, so for anybody that's listening, you know, we're not saying take the blue pill, take the red pill, whatever. It's like, but look at your life, right? And so if you see this, why wouldn't you want to know more information and and start to question and start to look at things like that? That's what I would say about this whole thing with the Matrix and this movie. It's a very powerful movie of how people are living their life today and have been living their life for centuries. You know, our ancestors, ancestors, you know, it just goes back, you know, such a long time that we've been doing this dance and um, because we didn't know. You know, and now it's being brought to the surface. So now it's an opportunity to, um, you know, push the blue pill away, you know, and start to um, do some research and start to look at things and start to watch alternative news, turn off the TV, you know, and all that kind of stuff that's only bad news anyway. I haven't watched TV in probably 15 years or more, you know, so that's what I would say about that, which I thought was really good how you. Uh, put that together like the whole world is in this um, which I wrote that down when you say the machines a lot are alive like um, which I thought was a really good analogy for people that are listening how does when you say that what does that look like like people are hooked into this machine well I mean it's you know so I've I've heard theories that the matrix is a the matrix is a um they're ter- the Terminator movies are a prequel to the Matrix movies. So I don't know how truthful that is. It makes it makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. But in, in Terminator, you know, it's the war between mankind and the machines. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I look at it from the perspective of with the Matrix, it's mankind had completely lost and uh, the machines it, it took over. And so basically it's these towers in these cities of – people that are just attached they're in these little pods they're filled with fluid and they have all these hoses just attached all over their body and their 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 energy is being harvested uh and and that's what's being used to fuel uh the the machines to keep keep doing what they're doing and building and um and you know it's uh staying staying attached to that matrix justin carpenter uses the the analogy a lot of times about how when neo first first wakes up in the pod after taking the red pill and all those tubes are coming out of him um there's one giant uh tube that's going down his throat and you know neo has to pull that out and uh, it's way down his throat and he compares that tube uh, that feeding tube as the mainstream media and um you know the the hive mind um which is 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 a part of the matrix so um you know there's a lot of symbology in that in that scene because you know after after detaching from it he goes down the that slide into that water and uh you know the he's picked up by the ship the nebuchadnezzar and he's on he's fished out of the water um almost you know just with like a hook and he He's coming out of the water and he's got his arms out like Christ. Yeah. And so he's saved by fishers of men and is is now Christed. So there's so much packed in allegorically to it. And I guess that's where decoding the storm mm-hmm. comes into play because, you know, there there's a, a, a line in the Q post future proofs past and. You know, it starts to become pretty unbelievable, uh, this whole story, you know, where I'm at watching the Q movie. Um, it, Where I'm at now, it becomes pretty unbelievable. But 
they left us clues back in the past to be able to go look at now and say, wow, they were in control of this. This was comms from them. You know, so if you eat, for instance, if you go to that Wag the Dog movie and you start doing the gematria on the character names mm -hmm. or different uh, Meisen scene um, from the set, you know, and that's Meisen scene is a uh, French for placed on on stage. Mm -hmm. So they literally leave in, in all of the numbers and in, in the set design clues for you to decode using gematria calculators. And when you when you receive these messages and it becomes mathematically impossible for any of this to become coincidence, you know, it gives you an element of trusting this plan and grasping how big this is at a completely different level. Because even to this day, most people do not grasp how massive this, this event and, and what's, what's going on is it's, it's huge. You know, I, I've got so much excitement for the future. Yeah. You know, I I can see the plan working and unplugging everybody from the matrix and there being a happy ending to all of this. You know, we've got a little bit of a bumpy road that we're going to have to make it through. But uh, in the end, I believe we're going to win and that the future is only limited by our imagination and and how much we can grow through this experience that we're going through now because – you know we are under you know, we are under psychological warfare but it is psychological warfare to turn us into better people and to create a a better better society a thriving society mm -hmm. um and i'll just let you jump in and see if you have any anything to add yeah i could, I... I could keep going on and on about the decoding stuff go ahead yeah well i think it's good because i think it's good for people to kind of know like what what does that mean and how does that play out in today? And when you talked about the future, future past, that the Q um, post on that, and I didn't know this until interviewing Justin, I didn't know all those movies, Allison, you know, that that was all made by the good, the, well, I mean, it's the good people. You know what I mean? I had no idea. So what I think is really important for anybody listening, go back and watch those movies. It's like they're, they've been telling us all along what's been going on. And it's like, Oh my gosh, like I had no idea, you know, and I've known about a lot of stuff, but it's like, there's so much more, like you said, there's so much more that we don't know. It's like, we're going to have to learn, unlearn everything, history and everything and relearn. And so, um, I, I just, it just amazes me how that this has been going on way before we even knew it. And I had no idea, like, especially the movies, I had no idea that they were even in control back then. Um, you know, it's just, it's mind blowing. Yeah, it, it, it truly is. And the more, the more you go down that rabbit hole, the crazier it all gets um, yeah. because it, it, it is fifth, fifth generational psychological warfare. So when you think about that, you know, that's, this stuff started back with our great grandparents. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, Joseph Joseph Kennedy um, had one of the one of the four big uh, owned one of the four big um, Hollywood studios during the golden age of of Hollywood. So, you know, the the ties with the Kennedy family, which is the Kaluni, really the Kaluni bloodline. Um, they have become masters of illusion and on-screen creation. Mm -hmm. They've had access to these tools, like in that wag the dog scenario. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I really encourage everybody to watch that movie. I would watch, I'd probably watch that movie right along, watch the matrix and watch wag the dog. Because if you, if you watch wag the dog, you'll understand where we're at right now. It'll help you see, it'll help you understand the, the Joe Biden deception you know, if you're anybody, anybody w with a brain on at this point knows that that's not Joe Biden up there. Yeah. Um, you know, so so the real question becomes, well, is is that a is it is it a perpetrator that's being controlled by the good guys or is it a perpetrator controlled by the bad guys? You know, so. Um, but like like Justin said, um, 
the white hats are in total control, you know, and I believe that 100%. I have total faith in that. Uh, I'm putting everything on it. Um, so, you know, and uh, most people, I think, know that it's James Woods uh, by now in a mask. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, so it's like you can take information like that yeah. and then you can go to Twitter and you could look at James Wood's account and realizing that James Wood is tweeting everybody at the same time as he's flying Joe Biden. And, <clears throat> you know, so yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying, yes, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's, uh, you, you know, so this is where you do become that observer once you realize that it's all psychological warfare at this point that they're using um cgi and, and different filming techniques to trick people into you know thinking that all this crazy stuff is going on and um you know it's it it's it's all an, it's all an illusion but they they leave you an out in the different encodings of gematria right so in q points us to gematria through q post 40 um this, this is one of one of the most important Q posts I think that there is. In this Q post it says uh A, B, C, D, E. And then underneath it it says four, ten, twenty. Mm -hmm. And so four is the uh, is D in the alphabet, the fourth letter. Yeah. Uh the tenth letter is J and the twentieth letter is T. So Donald John Trump. Mm -hmm. So Gematria is converting the letters into numbers and then creating values. So they, even though Q hasn't been really on the, you know, posting any more Q drops recently, if you're, if you're watching in the media and you're seeing all this craziness going on, you could start using Gematria to decode the headlines and look for messages that are left by the Q team to tell you, to almost reassure you like, Hey, you know, it's, it's us, you know, you don't have to worry about this. You know, if you if you do the gematria on on something in a headline and it comes up where we go, one we go all, or nothing can stop what's coming, you know, anything along those lines, you know, uh, something that comes up John John F Kennedy Jr. or JFK Senior, right? Mm -hmm. um, all these all these constants together, and there's way more to it than that, but I, I don't want to dive too deep into that rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, but you know it, it's it's provable if you know where to look to yeah. see that that every everywhere we look is a psychological operation all of, yeah. all of the movies that we've been watching for years are psychological operations that are designed to try to build a better mankind and you know these superhero stories are are designed to inspire people to be better people and to be heroes and yeah. um a lot of stuff is about ego and um you know have learning to learning what ego is and, and facing the ego and seeing these movies that if you know nine times out of ten you know the the villain in the movie is somebody with a with a super ego of of mm -hmm. some sort yeah. you know so there's a lot packed into it is is the point and uh, that's where the decoding the storm aspect comes into it you know mm -hmm. um the storm is tied to when trump was with all those military generals and the military was asking him what storm mr president you know and he's the calm before the storm um that also ties into the q post with white squall um which is which is a q movie and if you watch white squall you'll see that this experience and in the whole anon thing is about being on that ship q's the captain and, you know, we're being steered and, uh, you know, through this storm and having to come together and be the strongest that we could be and um, build that band of, of, of brothers and sisters around us to to help get through the storm. Yeah. You know, so they're they're everywhere and they've always they've been in front of us this entire time, yeah. you know. Um, so it is it is the greatest story ever told, in yes. my opinion. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, when you were talking, I kind of heard like people um, would have the question of, OK, well, JFK Jr. is not alive. And so, you know, and even if I did the gematria, 
you know, how is that really going to benefit me? You know what I mean? By seeing, especially if they're not in that place, do you know what I mean? They're not in that place of, um, I just don't, I don't think their mind can wrap around all of this of what's happening because it's so outside of that. Do you know what I mean? Cause we know that and it's just, but for a, a lot of the people, I don't think they really understand that because they're just so stuck in how could this be? There's just no way. You know what I mean? And so that's what I'm trying to do with the shows is really, you know, anybody that's listening is really just start like we were, we've been saying is just become that observer and see, um, look for things, start to notice things and you know, because like but Biden, you know, it's pretty obvious, but a lot of people still think that it really is him. And so, you know, how do you, you know, I just, how do you wake people up? And we know that, um, you know, there has to be this scare event because people are still, you know, um, doing the same thing and, you know, following the leader and not really, you know, they just don't really care. You know, it's just like they're just kind of, I don't know, I shouldn't say they don't really care. I don't really know that for sure, but it's like they just don't know, you know what I mean? And so I think um, all of this is important in knowing what the matrix is and taking out those feeding tubes. But as you and Justin had said, it's got to be that person to take out that feeding tube. Nobody could have done that for Neo in the movie. It really had to be him. You know what I mean? And so I feel that's just with the people um, that are uh, still in that slumber, you know, that are just riding the wave and just going along with what's going on, which, with what's going on out there until something really does shake them. And I do believe and I, I trust that fully that um, the military white hats and they're all in control, but really God's in control. And he's just helping control all of this, you know, because we're there in the physical down here. But I really think God's got this. And, um, you know, they're, they've they been helping us all along and trying to see what we can't see or what we, what we didn't see. Yeah. Um, you, you know, there's, there's two ways to come about the, with, with trying to get the people to see the elements to to the gematria because you know Q did point us at at it for a reason. Be, you know they're they're using it to code messages into stuff for us. But when you dive deeper into gematria, you know gematria is an anagram for great I am. Mm. And you know once you've seen enough gematria and the right numbers, and you can draw these connections, you understand that there is. There was divine intelligence that was put into the creation of of language, and uh, you know God left his fingerprints. He has a sense of humor, and he he left that there. Um, he she, um, you know, um, I'm I'm coming at it from a father God standpoint, Mother Earth uh, being the Earth, um, but um, you know, regardless of it, you can see the design and creation that went into. I mean everything you know there's nothing here that you can't see divine intelligence built right into the you know the, the fibonacci sequence you know yeah. pi and phi and um just so when you when you know about things like that and then you see this in in our language you know the 351s are the most significant and i i think uh if anybody wants to go down that this rabbit hole with gematria explore the number the, the gematria totals of 351 because um if you take so if you if you take so gematria in, in the simplest form with uh simple gematria is a equals one z equals 26 mm -hmm. so if you add up the entire english alphabet a through z it comes to 351 the total of all the all of the letters yeah. comes to 351 if you add if you add up god communicates through numbers it it comes to 351 if you calculate 20, 26 holy letters it comes to 351 uh jesus christ is the english alphabet comes to 351 
and you know i could go on and on like there's there, i don't want to mess any of them up uh, but there's a lot of them yeah. and in just in that in itself when you dive dive down that and you realize that it's mathematically impossible and that those were messages that were left there by the creator of this experience that we're in for us to you know for whatever reason to give us uh reassurity that he's there and you know you know you're on the right track and so it's it is life-changing when you when you start to see it and then when you see that all of these hollywood movies also use this gematria system and are encoding these messages of this one story and and then you have the elements of um, you know, when you see John F. Kennedy Jr. uh come up in the gematria in, in something, you know that it's that the that Q team in the army and these these psyop groups that are making these films. Um, you know, because when when JFK Jr. was John Galted, I mean that's that's the best terminology from it, the the book The Atlas Shrugged, uh, where they faked their deaths. It's a John Galting. So, the, you know, the military is, is who helped him fake his death. And, you know, he went behind the scenes and, you know, and this is going to sound crazy to a lot of people, but these, the, all these people that have been John Galted have been hiding in plain sight and playing different characters in the Q movie that we're watching, you know, and I don't want to, I don't want to give any spoilers away yeah. because, you know, I know quite a few, I know quite a few of them yeah. and, but it's it almost becomes this game and this this whole different thing in itself, you know, yeah. to see these these moving parts. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I love it. I love it. It's just, you know, when you talk about divine intelligence, you know, the fingerprints and all the everything shows. You, you have to know, and I know Q's always says is, you know, um, it's mathematically impossible. I mean, just just everything that's been going on it's like you have to know that there is a divine intelligence operating all of this you know that as assisting and so um yeah i i just think that it's just fascinating how you know like you said that they're all playing this role we know it's a stage and we know that things are there to awaken us to become so ridiculous you know kind of like in really the matrix um, you know, with you, there was a lot of things you'd think like, oh, that there's no way that could possibly happen. And you look in today's world, and you're thinking there's no way that could possibly happen, but it is, you know. And so I think that just ties in with what you just said to the matrix, to what's happening in the world, to that it's breaking down. And we know it's breaking down because we can see the systems breaking down. And for me, that represents where you know, God is the God of destruction, but the God of love as well. And it's destroying everything that has been man-made for not for our benefit, but for the benefit of them. And so, and, you know, we talk about them and you had mentioned Rockefeller earlier, you know, and that might be going a little bit too far down the rabbit hole for people, but, um, you know, there is this, we looked, talked a little you know, about the mind control and things like that, but um, I don't know if you want to, really want to talk about that. Um, and maybe it's not really necessary because things are breaking down. And I just really want people to see how in that movie, The Matrix, if they haven't seen it to watch it, but if they have, is how it had affected him mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, and financially being in this prison. You know, we're all in our own uh, prison, you know. And so it's for us to get us our, ourselves out of that prison by really becoming the observer and doing your research and looking beyond uh, what you can't see, you know, reading between the lines, seeing the forest through the trees, you know? And so all of these different sayings is just um, paying attention. And like you said earlier, it's to create a world with all of us, we can create a magnificent world. And I think that we are slowly getting there, but I think it's going to take a lot more of a collective to really, um, to shift their vibration and their, you know, consciousness and perception to a higher vibration, you know, um, that's my thoughts. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, you're you're spot on, and you know this this even ties into another 
movie that the the same creators of the Matrix made, and that's V for Vendetta. And we've done two watch parties for that on uh over on Charlie Freak uh or the Freak Sense TV channel. And um you know, I think I think I'm safe to say this because it had been revealed over there on that channel that that was John John behind the mask playing the V character. You know, so you know, it just adds that special element to 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 the movie. But you know, to what we were talking about. And like you said, you know, people are in that prison. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's the scene in it where where V has Evie um, in a prison cell, and you know, she she really believes that she's in a prison, and she's being interrogated and tortured, and she's she's being brought to the precipice of you know the 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 very fear of of death, yeah. and you know, ultimately when she overcomes that fear of death that's when the experience the, the 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 bad experience ends and v lets her out and you know she's mad at him but he did set her free and that's that's what we're what we're going through right now it's uh you know it had to be this way um because because of how strong the you know like you brought up the mk ultra mind control programming and mm -hmm. earlier you brought up that you know everybody's just going based upon what the people before the older people before them mm -hmm. or generation before them told them mm -hmm. you know well, why do you why, why are you a catholic oh because my mom was a catholic and, yeah. and her mom was a catholic yeah. you know and it's like well you none of you ever thought to question you know any of that like did they make the right choice uh you know and any of these things uh you know people just that it's you're you're almost born into that mind control programming yeah. you know if you're not taught expressively how to think for yourself you know you're you're rewarded in in the rockefeller schools for repeating you know everything is repeat this you, you oh, repeat repeat what i taught you here and you'll get a good grade yeah you know so you're not taught to think for yourself or think outside the box you're just taught to repeat this information to to me mm -hmm. and that's that's how people end up growing up and and uh once that programming is instilled, the longer it's there, the the harder it is to, to break free from it. And that's why that's why there are so many different elements and moving parts to all of this. You know, the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. where the whole Bible ties into this. Um, you know, there I do believe that there's psychological operations taking place around that. Uh, I don't want to go too deep into that, but um you know there had to, there has to be something that's going to catch the attention of everybody mm -hmm. and this global awakening it's you know nobody escapes this so exactly. q has that q, q has to create an entry point that's going to grab the minds of everybody no matter where you are in in your life you know so you know it's it's every everywhere you everywhere i look you know i i view everything through the the film and lens of is this a psyop or not yeah. you know i'm at that point to where i'm not completely outside the psyops but you know i'm at a very safe place mm -hmm. you know in, in them to where they do they don't affect me anymore you know i used to be i used to live in extreme fear mm -hmm. you know for in, until i had that realization and it came on a night that we it was the the watch party for v for vendetta we had last year um you know, when we watched that, you know, I, I had a lot of trust in the Q plan. Um, but when when I seen that scene with Evie and I was like, holy shit, that's what they put us through right now. Like, like, that's what I'm going through right now. Mm -hmm. Everything clicked. And I was like, and you know what? It worked. I was like, I don't feel I don't feel death in, or I don't fear death anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know that I'm I'm that I I have a soul or mm -hmm. I am I am a soul and I have a body. Yeah. you know not the other way around that uh you know the end is the beginning the beginning is the end and there there's there's really there really is nothing to fear but the fear you know and that's what you see with the truth community right now right. is everybody's ma make making all of their decisions based on on memory and in fear mm -hmm. so they they do have to reach that precipice uh or they can choose to stay 
digging down those same old boring uh, rabbit holes of corruption um, because there are there, there's enough rabbit holes to go down to keep you busy for 10 lifetimes. Exactly. Um, but at a certain point, yeah, at a certain point in time, you're supposed to get bored of it and sick of it and, 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 and see what's really behind it all. You know, I did uh, I have a decoding the storm rumble channel and uh, I did four episodes of decoding the Apple TV uh, series called Sila. And if you haven't watched that series yet, I'd highly recommend watching it before watching my decode series. But you'll you'll watch that and you'll just say, oh, my God, like this is the they, they just put our experience into this, you know, this this whole first season you know it's so relatable right for to, for for the society that we we've, we've been living in the experience that we have and it's absolutely amazing and i did I, yeah i did the four four parts of it decoding it and showing how these uh production companies are encoding uh these messages in into it all mm -hmm. for the hopes to just try to get people to give people like somewhat of a guide you know, to say, hey, look here, this is where I'm looking. This is what this means. And, you know, the more people see these same numbers appear over and over again, and these constants of the one story um, and messages that come directly from the cue boards, mm -hmm. right? You, you you put all these together and it's impossible. You, you just sit back and laugh, yeah. you know, as you're watching a show because you, if you learn, you learn that if something in the show catches your eye, calculate it in the gematria calculator if a certain part of scripts you know stands out to you calculate it you know because mm -hmm. they really do encode stuff everywhere and uh you know i could talk i could talk for hours about it, all, all of this and, and go in so many different directions so i'll, I'll let you jump in and I see know. oh my gosh steer this. <laughs> same here but what i love about it is when we're having this conversation this vibration this energy is going out and just touching people and not let alone they'll be watching this but um yeah it's just it's so uh it's fascinating when i, I really want to go back to that the v for vendetta that movie and the fear that you talk about because we're in that right now and this fear like that people you know there's that fear out there right and so, you know, the false evidence appearing real. And when, have, do you ever watch the movie Finding Joe? I'm sure the White Hats did that one too. Have you heard of that one? Uh, I, I think I've heard of it, but I have not seen it. Okay. It's such a great movie as well. And it's about facing your fear. And that's the thing is that I feel what they're doing is bringing us, like you said, to that precipice of that fear um, I believe there's going to be a lot of come to Jesus moments myself because a lot of people, if you don't believe in God, you will because he will show his hand and he's going to be very evident that it's him. But, um, you know, so it's just uh, just facing the fear and realizing that there's nothing to be fearful of, not death, nothing. You know, even what's going on in the world like you, I, I don't even know how long it's been, but I've just come to this piece of knowing that. And I, well, I didn't know where it's come. It's just my belief and fully trusting that God is in control and Jesus is at the wheel, basically it. And so I don't have anything to fear because it's like, Hey, if God's in control and Jesus is at the wheel, what else do we, there's nothing to fear. You know what I mean? Because it's all been taken care of and he just has people, you know, like he had, you know, the disciples that Jesus had and things like that. So, um, so I love that. It's just like looking at the movies and really, and I'm hoping, and my, my hope is that when people are watching the movies and watching these, that they're coming from a different perspective by listening to this and they can see it differently than just a movie. And that's just in the movies. You know, that's real life. Like they're, they're showing you, this is really what you're living. You just don't know it, but now you do because this information is being brought forward. And so I wanted to throw that out there. I don't have anything to add to that, but um, I feel that too, if you do, you can add that to it. But I also feel that what people are desiring as well is we're going through all of this, that where's the hope? You know what I mean? It's like, okay, we're going to go through all this fear and everything. And I think that's where it's like, 
giving people the hope or the um without really because we don't know what that looks like other than what we can create with our imagination you know like justin was saying too we had you know dream big you know what is it how you want to see the world put that energy forth envision that because whatever we think creates if we're thinking about it long enough and we know that and so um yeah i think just with what we're going through and then coming into that hope of where is that all going to go where is this going to culminate to and i think it's just us what are your thoughts on that yeah that's a that's another big topic uh you know in itself um because you know and when we get into the metaphysical aspects of of all this you know um it's it's a very fascinating topic but i'm i'm still doing a lot of my research on it um but my take from it is that our thought forms um that we hold in our, in our minds do have some sort of manifestation uh effect and you know to do alter the reality around us you know not just in the way we see things but that energy does go out there and it it does there is a shift um so you know where is the where where is the hope it is you know i think the real solution is, is going to come when society does realize how powerful that we are in, in our minds and our spirits and you know you see somebody like the q shaman uh jake jacob angeli chansley um you know going down to the um ley lines and you know getting having group meditations there and so you can see a, a small grassroots movement of, of people that are starting to dive back into this you know and what's a shaman it's somebody who bridges that connection from people in the physical world to the to the metaphysical world mm -hmm. so you know i see all these moving parts you know whether or not you know the whether or not his character is organic or he's playing a role in this you know it it doesn't matter to me because he he's serving a purpose mm -hmm. um you know he he is somebody out there that uh um is he's he's bridging the connection i mean because he's running for congress right in in uh in in arizona i can't remember what seat but you know so he's he's drawing the attention of of different people on on uh, x and he's creating this uh these opening up these communications and he's able to slip in and plant these seeds um and grow this this following you know and it's um i do believe in in like the that whole hundredth monkey uh effect i don't know if you're familiar with that Absolutely. with the monkeys yeah. on the island they you know and yeah they're on for anybody that doesn't know it you know there's uh you know these island chains that had these monkeys uh you know all spread across them and when uh you know when one island when enough of the monkeys uh, you know, started washing their coconuts down in the water, something along those lines. Uh, once enough of them did it, that caused a shift on all of the islands. So all of the monkeys across all of the islands had started to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I do believe that we're all connected in that way and um, being pushed to this precipice the way that we are through through the Q operations, uh, these psychological operations. Um, this is this is where it's, it's it's leading people it's leading people to self discovery to question the very nature of things the very nature of reality and you know again that's why the gematria is such a was at least for me was such an important tool for me to to take to go from that 50,000 foot view to that 100,000 foot view mm -hmm. to realize that you know this sting operation that we hear about that Q is it's it's not just a sting operation for for the for the bad these these elite people who are harvesting the adrenochrome. It's a sting operation on on the American people and in, in the world in itself. You know, we people would be foolish to think that you know the 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 army groups behind this are not watching and seeing the different roles that people are doing and stepping into and and because at at a certain point in time they do want to transition 
the power back to the people completely. You know, I don't know where we stand with with the military and the power, but the end goal is is to turn and this is what I believe the end goal is is to turn is to is to create a society that the military can turn the the government back over to and have people at a state of you know and I, I know a lot of people are are fear, fearful of this term uh but anarchy you know no masters no no rulers is is what it's not a bad term right. you know but it's it's we they they're pushing society to a point to where people understand the need to become better so that way we don't have to elect other people to go rule over us That's right. you know it's um you know people that aren't getting the message that it's you know having you know 51% of people rule over the other 49% of people is not an ideal form of government mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not yeah. very good at all no. You know, especially especially when only when only two to three percent of people are actually paying attention to what's going on. Absolutely. You know, it's a big part of how we've gotten to where we've gotten. So mm -hmm. that's another element of this Q movie. It's they've got to have this controlled demolition to bring people to that point to, you know, it's from like the war, war of the world. It's the precipice. We, we must be brought to the precipice of destruction yeah. to ha to to have that will to change mm -hmm. and once you know that in your heart that that's what's taking place this whole experience becomes completely different mm -hmm. um you you can laugh at the movie you could laugh at the ridiculousness of it yeah. you know you have empathy and sympathy for the people that are still going through it yeah. and try to try to give them a, a helping hand in the right direction because this is hard yes. this is this is extremely hard and and has major ramifications again on on people's lives. Yeah, um, and that's a good point. Did I answer? Did I answer your question? Or yes, yes, you did. Yes, definitely. Um, and I really do believe it's what we're going to create. Even though you know you talk about the anarchy, but it's like collectively, it's gonna. I, it's like if you look at nine eleven or any of the events that have happened, major events, how all the people came together as a community. And I believe that collectively we'll all come together as a community and we'll all have something to bring to that, to create, to build a new, and that, you know, do we need government and all that? Uh, I don't think so. Cause I do believe, like you said, when we do realize the, the power that we had, and that's why they suppressed us. That's why we were conditioned and programmed because, and Trump always said this, it's not him, it's us. You know, and so um, they knew that if we knew the capability that we had, because Jesus said, you'll do greater things than I. And so we are made in the image of God. And this is my belief. And that if they knew, well, they did know the capabilities that we have. Right. And so but they didn't want us to know that. And so that's why we were numb, dumbed down and conditioned because they didn't want us to know. And then once that is revealed that we know that. I think it's going to be a whole different uh, game because it's like, oh, my gosh, now that I know that I can do this, obviously from the heart, right? No, no ill intentions and things like that. But I don't think that's going to be able to exist because I don't think it's going to need to exist because of where we are headed to what collectively what people will be doing. But to know that you have this capability, and this power within you that is beyond what you, you could even fathom you know, that it's going to be pretty amazing, really amazing. I'm, I mean, I'm excited to see just the, just to see the, the journey of it all, you know, unwinding and unraveling and just being on this path. And um, it's pretty amazing. Even with what's going on in the world, I still think it's really amazing uh, to watch this. And you made a really good point that, um, and I really want to bring this, this up and um, just to the people that are listening, that it is hard. This is not, been, you know, it's not easy for anybody. And I think that the people that are really going to um, be shaken up from what's going to be revealed and just things that are going to, you know, what's going to happen and stuff like that, that uh, to know that they have some place to go, you know what I mean? Uh, and to go to these alternatives, to go to your, um, your channel. And what is your uh, channel, Mike? Is it just decoding this on Rumble, decoding the storm? 
Yeah, it's decoding the storm on Rumble and Telegram and uh and on on uh X. Um the spelling on X is I think at decoding the storm without an O. Okay. Um yeah, I'm on all three of those platforms. And is it all one word? Like there's no spaces in between decoding, you know, the the, the storm. It's all one. Uh, on Telegram, it's at decoding the storm with no spaces. Okay. I think that would be the same on X, uh, okay. just without the O. And then it, on Rumble, if you just search for decoding the storm, uh, that's where you'll find all four four parts. Uh, the videos that I did, they're they're lengthy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one of one or two of them are about three hours long, but it it's in 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 depth um, mm -hmm. breakdown of of the messages and how and how to pull the gematria and metadata out of you know you know for this show silo you know for it to have such deep meaning and to draw on this lived and shared experience that we're all going through i mean the show is basically about these people that they're 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 all born in and live in a missile silo underground and they're told they're told that if you go outside you you will die it's so toxic out there that you'll die and you know, so it's it's very reminiscent of what it's like, you know, being in this society, you know, it's in, especially if, you know, you look at the elements to it all of, you know, there being an ice wall, you know, with the with the level earth, um, you know, that there there's potentially more land, you know, out there um, when you when you do travel um, uh, further out there, you know, I don't know what it all looks like, what reality looks like with the land that we're on, yeah. um, how much, how much more there is out there, but yeah. it's that same element of fear, keeping, keeping people in and like, there's, there's the power structure, people keeping people in, uh, mm -hmm. from, from exploring out there, but, uh, I'm not doing it justice, but it's, it's very, very good. And when you can, uh, when you can understand and grasp, that it is our story being told, and then you compare it with the gematria, it it just makes it so much more special and is 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 just so proof positive to you. Like it's it's unexplainable yeah. that to, to to draw this connection, to realize that there are these uh people behind the scenes that are leaving us these breadcrumbs to the truth and leaving proof that this is hey, this is us that are making this for you. It's yeah. It's it's gonna be mind blowing to people when they learn. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, just leave it there. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's gonna be crazy. So we just want to let you guys know we've been there. We've done it. It's like we're, it was hard too, but you know, we're just here, and there's there's a lot of places to go, and Mike had given his information as well, and so um, just so people know that there is a place to go to kind of educate themselves and things like that, and there's so many other channels too. But um, one last one last question I have for you, Mike, is that what is one gem? I mean, I'm sure there's many, but what's one thing that you can share with the audience that really made a difference in your life to bring you to this point of awakening? Well, uh, it's another big, big question, a wonderful question. Um, you know, I would say the biggest part of all of this currently um i'm sorry can you word the question one more time i want to yeah, i want to make sure i answer your question correctly yeah 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 so what's one gem one thing that you and i'm sure there's many that you have learned along the way that brought you to this awakening okay it, so um best advice that that i can give is to you know, realize that you don't have to go through this alone. Um, find find the people that are open minded like yourself. Um, don't be shy. Join the Telegram spaces. Um, you know, exercise your sh your throat chakra, and you know, use use all this time that we have now to prepare for what's coming on the other side of this EBS and during the EBS, you know, the 10 days of darkness. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to take a lot of time for people that have not watched, have not been watching the movie and paying attention. It's, 
it's not something that they're that they're just going to grasp right away. You know, they're going to need explaining. Um, you know, and we on the other side of it, we are going to have to come together more as as communities and be closer to each other and uh, step up in our communities and you know, so so much change is coming. So it's like take this time right now to do that is as much work on yourself as you can. And yeah. you know, the telegram spaces that that I'm in, you know, Justin Carpenters, uh, Charlie Freaks, um, you know, there's a couple other good ones, but those two are are some of the most important uh ones you could join. You know, surrounding yourself with these people that are on the same journey and provide that space to 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 connect to people that are sharing the experience because out there in 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 the matrix you know like the that's the best way to to view it is going into these telegram groups it's like leaving leaving the matrix and and being with those people outside the matrix for a couple hours then you've got to go back to your real life in the matrix and deal with all the other people that are in the matrix so you know that's great advice there is to join these telegram groups and and start speaking up but uh, healing is a feeling yeah. is is another really good one and they do mul- they do multiple shows every week and through these through these psychological operations that we're living there there does come negative consequences PTSD uh, yeah. amygdala hijack from living in fear so you know i've been using this time to to try to get over those humps and uh, you know, look in the mirror and be the change that I want to be. You know, that's that's what really what I think that Q wants us doing right now is just as much work on on ourselves as we can to be ready for this amazing and, and bright future that's coming. Yeah. Um, but we're the people that are going to be the ones that are involved in doing it. You know, we just can't expect. The military and and the Freemasons are just going to step up and say, "All right, everybody, we're going to fix it." You know, it's we all have to do that inner work and have that dark night of the soul go on the journey. So, and I'll just yeah, so I don't keep going on and and because I <laughs> that's my problem is I could keep going on and on. No, but it's um, great because it really helps. I think just the the message that you're delivering is really helping people. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's really important because we are all in this together and however we can share and bring a message is really important. And I think it just all matters. So I appreciate that. It was beautiful. It's awesome. Thank you very much. It's been a, it's been a joy to come on and, uh, you know, just have the conversation and, uh, speak directly from the heart. And, uh, you know, it's, it's what has to happen in order for us to move forward. So um, I think that me seeing and and being blessed to see the things the way that I, the way that I have, it's opened up that door for me to step into that role to um, come forward. And again, you know, try to get other people to, to do the same, basically, you know, just like Justin Carpenter has done for me, you know, that man has been, uh my lighthouse you know so it's i want to just uh shine as bright as he does and help as many as he does and i'll just leave it there but thank you again it's been a amazing time and uh, i you know anytime you want to have me on uh just send me a message because there's so much more we could go into we kind of did go all over the place uh if you wanted me to come on and talk more specifically about some of the gematria and where to find the 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 hidden metadata from Q in the um in their numbers and stuff uh I can do that yes. but uh let let me say one more time people look at look into the 351s the 351s will prove to you that again that there is divine intelligence in creation and that the that gematria is the word of god and he left messages in there for for us all and it's all the proof that you need once you put it all together. How many coincidences before it's mathematically impossible? Yes. Amen. For sure. Oh my gosh. It's crazy to think, you know. 
And then, uh, Mike, let them know again where they can reach you. Because I know it was in the middle, sort of the, towards the end of the show, but this will at least will be the last part of the show, too, so they can they know that. Telegram, X, and Rumble. Your channel is Decoding the Storm. Can you give them the at Decoding the Storm? Um, hold on, hold on one second. Um, okay. I know on I know on uh, Telegram it is just at decoding the storm okay. with no um no spaces. Then I'm pulling up X now. Um. Then uh, on X, it's at decoding the storm without a O in storm. And then uh, also on Rumble, if you just search uh, decoding the storm, you'll see that same logo uh, that's that's showing up under my name now. Um, the little storm logo. Yeah. Um, but yeah, all, all three of those. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so again, again, Mike, for really taking the time to be on the show. I really, really greatly appreciate it. It was amazing. And I appreciate you and what you're doing in the world um, to bring in truth and awakening people. Um, so we can all, you know, uh, weather the storm and uh, come out the other side really in a completely different world that's going to be amazing. Looking forward to that. So thank you. You're welcome and, and thank you for doing what you're doing because it is um, you know going to be these these will be very special videos in hindsight when it, when everything goes uh, you know when we have that big shift um these videos will have came from a time when the psyops were still taking place and we were still pushing through it and banding together. So, you know, I view, I view all this as history. Yeah. And uh, so thank you for helping me uh, be a part of history and it, it being recorded for uh, the future. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much. And thank you to all the listeners and people who are, are going to be watching. We really greatly appreciate you. And we just hope that um, what was shared and the messages on here really do uh, touch your heart and really awaken you to really um, the greater good and what's really what's really coming. Um, but we do have to go through a lot of stuff to get there. So just want to say thank you for uh, for watching and thanks again, Mike. And we will see you again on the sh next time on the show. Definitely would love to do some gematria. That would be awesome just to give people some more information. So awesome. All right. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, everybody, for joining the show. Love you.